Welcome to Studio 51. I'm Stephanie Buffamonti. And I'm Chelsea Kuchik. Studio 51 is a weekly news magazine produced by Loyola University students in Chicago. Our name is Studio 51 because we are located on 51 East Pearson in this beautiful street studio in downtown Chicago. You won't want to miss a minute of our show. Curious of how the Ebola outbreak is being handled? Studio 51's commentary tackles this ongoing issue. Our foodie takes us to Rogers Park, and we have a recap on the latest in sports. And if you didn't catch Law & Order SVU last night, our entertainment reporter has the scoop on its celebrity connections. Also, fall is officially here, so stay tuned for our complete weekend forecast. But first, here's this week's news summary with Studio 51's Lauren DeVito. Lauren? This was a week of chaos at O'Hare and Midway airports, and travelers are still experiencing delays and cancellations. On Friday, FAA worker Brian Howard allegedly set fire to computer servers at the Air Traffic Navigation Center in Aurora, Illinois. Studio 51's Alex Whitler has more on the fire. If you plan on traveling today or anytime soon, you might want to check your flight status. They informed us that there would be a 40-minute delay but we were already on the plane. Over 3,000 flights coming into and out of Chicago's two airports have been delayed since a fire damaged a local air traffic control center Friday. Well, I'm aware of it because I was checking online to make sure my, I saw it on the news that there was a fire and I, I knew it was at O'Hare, but I was concerned that my flight would be delayed also. The fire has caused flight problems nationwide. One of the affected airports is Midway, but workers say traffic since Friday has been regular, maybe a dash slower, but this is our slow season. Brian Howard, the man accused of starting the fire, could face 20 years and a fine if convicted. So none of us like to hear about these events, but uh, I personally don't get nervous. Aviation authorities say it could take up to two weeks just to get the air traffic control center back to the way it used to be. Reporting for Studio 51 News, I'm Alex Whitler. Thanks, Alex. Sources at the FAA said that Howard was high on marijuana during the incident. Flights as of yesterday were back up to more than 80 percent, but that might change due to heavy storm activity tonight and through this weekend. With trouble at O'Hare and Midway, it's no surprise that President Barack Obama did not land at either Chicago airport. Instead, the president took Air Force One to Gary Chicago Airport in Indiana for his Chicago appearances. Today, the president is here supporting Democratic Governor Pat Quinn's re-election campaign. Later, he's giving a speech about the economy at Northwestern University in Evanston. Speaking of Governor Quinn's campaign, here's the latest poll on the race for Illinois governor. Battleground polling group says that Republican candidate Bruce Rauner and current Governor Quinn are pretty much tied up. Each candidate has support from 43% of voters. 8% of voters are undecided. Overseas, Hong Kong residents are getting into politics too. Tens of thousands of protesters in Hong Kong have been rallying since this, in the streets since Tuesday. They have one goal, democracy without intervention from China. They also want their current leader, CY Lung, to step down so they can choose their own leaders. Many of these protesters are students who are sleeping in the streets to raise awareness about their cause. Unfortunately, hackers have been targeting the protesters through their smartphones. Software company Lacoon has been investigating. Lacoon said that it believes cyber attacks could be coming from the Chinese government. Finally, Chicago has found a way to commemorate the fire of 1871, and it's not just another star on our flag. This Saturday, Chicago will celebrate the Great Chicago Fire Festival by starting a house on fire. But don't worry, it's not the O'Leary Barn this time. The Red Moon Theatre Company has built a replica home out of wood, which it will set ablaze on the Chicago River. The spectacle begins Saturday night at 8, between Columbus and State Street on the Riverwalk. For Studio 51 News, I'm Lauren DeVito. Thanks, Lauren. Well, I guess there's no better way to start a party than by setting a house on fire. Uh, it sounds a little too dangerous for me. Maybe. <laughs> on to health. A mysterious form of a respiratory infection continues to grip the Midwest and is spreading. More on this with Studio 51's Health Beat reporter, Anna Buchanan. Thanks, ladies. There is a weird respiratory outbreak spreading across the country targeting young children. It is called Enterovirus D68 or EVD-68, and it has now spread to 38 states. First identified 50 years ago, the virus was rarely tested, 
but it is gaining attention once again. Within the last month, nearly 3,600 children have been treated for this illness. Symptoms include difficulty of breathing, a bad cold, body aches, and coughs. And here in Chicago, for the first time in 10 years, ambulances have been diverted from the University of Chicago's Children's Hospital due to the lack of space in the emergency room. A new study has found an easier way to detect HPV, a virus that causes cervical cancer in women. Now, a simple urine test offers a less invasive alternative rather than the typical cervical pap smear test. According to the World Health Organization, nearly 3,000 women a year are killed by cervical cancer. However, testing over the years has fallen by 80% due to embarrassment and fear of an invasive examination. Researchers are hoping that a urine test will persuade more reluctant women in getting tested for HPV. And finally, Soda, company, soda pop producers are pledging a 20% calorie cut in their drinks by the year 2025. This is a rare commitment by the soda industry in order to help lower obesity rates. Susan Neely, the president of the American Beverage Association says, companies want to help improve children's health. The companies have also committed to providing calorie counts on vending machines and self-serve fountain dispensers. That includes this week's Health Bee Reporter Report. I'm Anna Buchanan. Thanks, Anna. I think that's a great way to get our younger generations to start drinking healthier. I agree. Maybe soon enough we'll be sipping on some healthier sodas at the ball game. Hope so. Speaking of sports, let's go to sports fanatic Carly Free with sports in 51 seconds. Thanks, Chelsea. Well, the Bears were destroyed 38-17 to on Sunday in a disappointing loss to their rival Green Bay Packers. For the fifth straight time, the Cheeseheads won at Soldier Field, a place we were supposed to have the home field advantage. The first two quarters were evenly matched with a halftime score of 21-17. to Things quickly fell apart, though, and then fell apart in the third quarter when on cue, Bears quarterback Jay Cutler threw two interceptions. Offense wasn't the only concern. Bears defense was atrocious, allowing the Packers to score on every possession. Cutler spoke with ESPN after the game, saying, quote, We had some unfortunate things happen to us. Ha! Well, Jay, the Bears certainly have experienced some unfortunate things ever since you joined the team. In your 10 starts against the Packers, the Bears are a dreadful 1-9. and nine. Cutler's next chance for redemption is this Sunday when the Bears take on the Carolina Panthers. And the Bulls charged through their media day on Monday, showing optimism for what is surely to be an exciting NBA season. The players and coaches attended press conferences, took team photos, and filmed promotional videos. During his interview, General Manager Gar Foreman said the main focus offseason was to nurse Derrick Rose back to health. And it was a good sign Rose made it through the FIBA World Championships unscathed. Rose doesn't seem to be bothered by his injury history. He told the media he thinks he'll win a championship soon. Knock on wood, please, Derek, would you? The Bulls' first preseason game is this Monday against the Washington Wizards at the United Center. Finally, dust off your feathers, Blackhawk fans. The preseason is in full swing, and that means more roster cuts. The Blackhawks announced Tuesday forwards Cody Bass and Pierre Cedric Labry will be sent to play in the American Hockey League for the Rockford Ice Hogs. That's the same team goaltender Corey Crawford play for, played for prior to joining the Hawks. This was Sports in 51 Seconds. I'm Carly Free. Thanks, Carly. I'm actually looking forward to the Bears game this Sunday, Stephanie. Let's hope they do a little bit better than last week, though. I'm hoping so. Up next, I speak with editor of the Loyola Phoenix about a controversial social media app. And this week's commentator gives his opinion on how the Ebola outbreak is being handled. Hey Luis, did you know that you're Elmo's plan? Your plan? Yeah, Elmo's mommy said that if Elmo is too sick to go to school, the plan is that Elmo stays with Luis and Maria. Oh yes, we have that plan all in oh, place. Oh, great! <laughs> You never know when your child will be too sick to go to school. So have a plan ready so your child can stay home and get healthy. Luis is the man because he's almost planned. The man because he's almost planned. <laughs> to learn more about preventing flu, visit flu.gov. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. 
Spin how you feel? How you feel? I'm feeling good. Spin me. Right, spin right. me. We got you. We got you. Thanks for joining us. Stephanie is in the studio with Loyola Phoenix editor Esther Castillejo to give us the rundown on this week's edition of The Phoenix. Thanks, Chelsea. And thanks, Esther, for coming in and sitting down with me. Um, one interesting article I saw in the Phoenix issue this week was about a Yik Yak application. Could you briefly tell our viewers a little bit about what this is? Yik Yak is a social media app that works similarly to Twitter, um, but it's anonymous. So uh, users can comment on whatever they want and say whatever they want without being identified. So now, I know that in this application, you will only get messages from someone who's 10 miles, uh, who has a 10 mile radius from you. And don't you kind of, do you believe that that might be prone to someone's cyberbullying? Well, that's, that has definitely been a concern, uh, especially in universities and high schools around the country. Uh, several universities in the US, including Colgate University, have restricted the use of the, of the app. Uh, because there have been instances of cyberbullying and uh, even hate speech on the app because it's, it's anonymous, so you can basically say whatever you want. Right, and I know one other university in Vermont actually said that they will not allow the messages to go through their internet service. What do you think of that? Is so that something maybe Loyola would want to do? Well, um, the Associate Dean of Students, Jane Neufeld, uh, said that Loyola will not ban the app because she feels that it would be censoring students and if, they st if, the, if the university starts by censoring a social media app, when will it end? So uh, Loyola is not looking into censoring. However, um, Neufeld said that she trusts students to use the app responsibly, so that maybe in the future that's something we should definitely uh, pay attention to. Do you think students are responsible with this app? Well, it really depends. You see what you see everything in that app, from complaining yeah. about slow Wi-Fi service to uh, discussing spiders and even uh, <laughs> squirrels on campus. Yeah. So right now, I don't think Loyola has seen um, bad uh, comments on the app. Right. Well, thank you so much, Esther, for coming no with us and, and joining us on our show. And um, up next, we talk uh, with Studio 51's commentary, Joaquin Carrig. He gives us the insight on the latest Ebola outbreak. Joaquin? Thank you, Stephanie. By now you're aware of the existence of Ebola, although it wouldn't surprise me if the public merely knows that it is killing lots of African people. Ebola is a virus contracted through physical contact with the bodily fluids of an infected person, such as sweat, blood, vomit, and fecal matter. The virus has spread to five countries in Western Africa, infecting at least 6,000 people and killing over 3,000. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention says that number could surpass by one million by January of next year. This isn't the first time Ebola has struck Africa, though. The virus has shown up in rural villages in the country multiple times, but for the most part, health officials were able to contain it. So why is Ebola such a major epidemic now? Because the global response to the virus this time around was too late and too inadequate, it let a virus known to be difficult to contract spiral out of control. The World Health Organization didn't say it was a public health emergency until five months after the epidemic began. In fact, it took three months for the health officials to even realize it was Ebola. Three months. That is their job. Combine that with the fact that healthcare workers, doctors and nurses, both native and foreign, don't have the resources to care for the victims, let alone do it safely, and you have an utter fiasco. Over 200 workers have died already. That's 20 times the amount of aid workers who died during the last Ebola outbreak in 1976. I believe that the duty of the developed world is to ensure the safety of its citizens. You might think preventing glo the global spread of Ebola would be a higher priority. But more importantly, the developed world should hold those countries less fortunate in higher regard. The living conditions in the West African countries affected by Ebola are simply appalling. It's no wonder disease can run so rampant. Help these countries eradicate Ebola and lift themselves out of poverty. It serves the best interest of everybody involved. What's more, it might restore some faith in humanity. Back to you guys. Thanks, Joaquin. And I agree, Ebola is something that we need to take way more seriously. 
I agree. But on a lighter note, two of my favorite things mixed together last night, Celebrity Gossip and Law & Order SVU. Studio 51's resident entertainment junkie, Jade Anderson, has more on this story. Jade? What's going on, everyone? I'm Jade Anderson, here to catch you up on all things entertainment. Now, this summer had some of the biggest celebrity scandals, and it seems like a lot of them are being brought up in this week's news. With the tagline ripped from the headlines, Law & Order SVU is known for using real news as inspiration for their stories. But instead of just one, in last night's episode, American Disgrace, SVU took on the storylines of three major celebrity scandals, including the unforgettable Jay-Z and Solange elevator fight, the Ray Rice elevator assaults, and the Donald Sterling racist remarks saga, marking it, making it one of the most interesting plots. With over 12 million viewers tuning into last night's episode, many people had a lot to say. We asked you to tweet us our, your thoughts at Studio 51 Chicago, and while most of you applaud SVU for celebrity scandals, a few of you questioned the show's motives. Ms. Reza said they ses sensationalize the celebrity stories to get more viewers. They don't want to bring awareness, they just want money. Tyler Monroe says law and order never fails to bring awareness to serious social justice issues. Hashtag racism, hashtags rape, hashtag love that show, hashtag so relevant. And lastly, SV, um, Tay Winfield says SVU is smart for using celebrity stories as inspiration. It makes everyone pay attention to important topics. Thanks for tuning in to this week's entertainment report. For Studio 51, I'm Jade Anderson. Thanks, Jade. Feeling hungry? Stick around for this week's foodie report. And is it finally time to break out those coats and scarves? You won't want to miss this week's weather report. How you feel? How you feel? I'm feeling good. Spin me, spin me. I got you. I got you. Oh, goodness. G morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. Text me. Are your parents home later? We can hang. LUV, love you. JK. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. XO. What'd you dream of? Something I did. Are you on your way to the mall? Only nude pics. Send me some. Text me. In the mood for Italian this weekend, Studio 51's foodie, Monique James, has a great spot to try. If you're looking for Italian food, I have just the restaurant for you. I visited Leona's Italian restaurant located in Rogers Park on North Sheridan Road. Not only does it serve Italian food, it's homemade. I ordered the chicken parmesan sandwich, which is grilled chicken with provolone cheese, marinara sauce, and is served in, bet in between two slices of garlic bread. It comes with a very crisp salad with your choice of salad dressing. If that's not enough cheese for you, I ordered the five cheese lasagna. It includes provolone, mozzarella, asiago, and creamy ricotta cheese with a homemade marinara sauce. And don't forget to try the lemonade. It has a tangy lemon flavor that will make your lips pucker up. I recommend this restaurant if you are looking for affordable prices that vary between two and $13. The atmosphere is friendly with great service. The best time to get there is after lunch because it's pretty busy during lunch hour. For Studio 51, I'm your foodie, Monique James. Yum, thanks Monique. The weather has been like a roller coaster this week. We have Molly Brewer right here outside our studio to get you prepared with the weekend weather report. Molly? It's pretty cloudy out here right now and we can expect to see rain throughout the evening. Today's high is 73 degrees and a low of a me the mid 60s. Get your blankets out for tomorrow because the high is around 61 degrees with a low of 37. If you're expecting a bright autumn weekend, you should count on a rain check. Saturday's high is 51 degrees with a low of 39 and Sunday's high is a 
uh, 60 degrees with a low of 42, but we can expect to see rain showers throughout the weekend. This has been your weekend weather update with Molly Brewer. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Molly. Well, it sounds like the perfect weekend to stay warm inside and finally catch up on my Netflix. That actually sounds like a good plan. I might want to join you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for tuning in with us this week. Don't forget you can tweet us at Studio 51 Chicago or like us on Facebook at Studio 51. Enjoy your weekend.